this key is huge, isn't it, for this particular map? Now let's take a look at the map. This is the northeastern portion of Colorado. All right, so we're in Colorado. And so northeast Colorado. Denver is right up in here somewhere. So this is kind of the Denver area. Over here we have maps. And notice they're different colors. And so if we uh, kind of look in here, we can see lots of different things here, um, colors. So if I see this, let's, let's take this yellow color right here. And you can see this would be a rock unit right here. And you can see it goes all the way up here. That's the rock unit. And it's kind of this particular variety of yellow. You just kind of, there you go. So that's the rock unit. It looks like a funny looking finger. So it's that kind of shade of yellow. And so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to try and find that particular shade of yellow. Okay, here's my shade of yellow. And these yellows, by the way, tend to be the sedimentary rocks. The red tend to be the, actually, let's write that down. The yellow colors are sedimentary rocks. The red are igneous rock, the red colors, and then the uh, black and the brown, really dark colors, are your metamorphic rocks. All right, and so this, that, that section we were just looking at was yellow. It's hard to see this. It's, it's very hard to read these particular things, but we can see the yellow here. Um, we can see its name, and, and so it's a sedimentary rock is kind of the key thing to understand. So this rock right here, this is in Washington County in Colorado, is um, a sedimentary rock. We are way out here if you don't understand the geography here. This is the edge. Kansas is right here, and Nebraska is up here. could be Wyoming, actually. Wyoming is up here. Nebraska is up here. Um, and uh, these are sedimentary rocks. So generally speaking, we have sedimentary rocks out on the eastern plains. Now, an area that everyone gets interested in, at least where we live, is um, here we live kind of close to Colorado Springs, Colorado, and that's down in this section. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit later. But right here, this is where Pikes Peak is right here, and you can see it's very red, so that's an igneous formation, and we can figure out the, the, what it variety is. And here we are in Woodland Park about right there. And, uh, yeah, so we'll zoom in on that a little bit. Let's take a look some more. This is the northwestern portion of Colorado. And if we look northwest, if you probably know this, northwestern Colorado is filled with mountains. And so we can see lots of reds. Now notice the brown rock unit right here, this brown rock unit right, you know, kind of like that. That particular unit, of course, is brown. And this is a different shade of brown. And what do you think you got going there? Guess what? Yeah, that's right. These are going to be metamorphic rocks right here. And then we've got some yellow. Interesting thing to see some yellow over the top of this brown. That would, of course, be sedimentary rock. Okay. And over here we've got some uh, a red. It's you know I've got some blue in there too. But you get the idea of what you can see. And then here we have the southeastern down um, southeastern uh, Colorado. All right. And so uh, southeast has the eastern plains. Here's Pueblo right here. Uh, Colorado, and these are the eastern plains, and they typically tend to be kind of these sedimentary rocks. We get some dark colors, though. It's interesting. We have some metamorphic rocks down here, and then um, here's uh, the southern portion of uh, of the Pikes Peak area right there, and then the in southwest. Lots of mountains in the southwest. Uh, you'll have Telluride Ski Resort, kind of probably down here, and Durango here. Here's Alamosa, uh, kind of in here somewhere. And you can see lots of mountains. Look at all these igneous rocks right here. Now, a couple other things I want to point out. I'm going to see if we can kind of zoom into this. Is that if you all, if you see lines on the on the map, the lines, write this down. The lines are faults. So if you see a line, so if you kind of look in this sort of igneous section right here, I'll zoom in. Um, is each of those lines right here and here, etc. Those are faults. Those are the faults. And so you can see where the faults are. So the uh, uh, geologic maps don't just have colors, but they also have lines, and the lines indicate fault zones. Now let's just do the, a quick zoom. This is uh, close to where we live. Um, here is Colorado Springs, okay? And Woodland Park is essentially probably, they don't have roads. I'm going to say kind of right about here. First of all, we should make a note, fault here, right? Fault here, fault here, fault here. Lots of faults up here. Okay. Some other things that are intriguing to look at here is um, this blue right here um, is an interesting formation. We also see the blue formation. It's actually a sedimentary rock formation. It is the same blue. It's called the fountain formation. And this fountain formation is um, what makes um, the Garden of the Gods park all those red rocks. And so we can see that. Interesting, we see these red rocks up here. So these things were laid down. Interesting thing. These were laid down. Actually, it might be the yellow one. Anyways, it's it's up here somewhere. It could be the yellows. 
I may be wrong about that. I think actually the yellow is the fountain formation. Anyways, they were laid down, and then the mountain came up on top because this formation right here is the same formation you see um, at Garden of the Gods down here. Okay, and notice, notice that mostly what we've got is we've got this big red thing. That's the thing that's dominating. That's a huge piece of igneous rock. That is the Pikes Peak Batolith, and of course Pikes Peak is well about right here, right? Isn't it somewhere like that? It's the top of Pikes Peak at least. And so that's the thing that dominates where we live. Um, yeah. By the way, those who uh, live here, this is kind of up near um, Red. Um, what's it called? Uh, some painted rocks uh, campground. So if you've ever been up there. Painted Rocks Campground, that's where you'll see the same kind of rock formation that you see down in Colorado Springs at the Garden of the Gods. Notice up here we've got the black stuff, this whole rock unit right here, and that, of course, is um, a metamorphic rock that's been laid down. So I just want you to understand how to read it. Okay, a couple more things that we want to talk about, a few more things, I should say. When we talk about rock unit names, the first thing is they have two-part names. They usually will have a, a name. For example, um, uh, the red rocks that you find down in Colorado Springs, you also find up in Denver at Red Rocks State Park and Amphitheater. That's called the Fountain Formation. Um, so the, it was probably near the town of uh, Fountain. There's a town called Fountain. And then they use the word formation. Uh, usually they say the word formation. It was formed. And so sometimes the, there's a place like a town or a river or a mountain. And so based on something, that's what they're gonna, how they're going to name it. They call it a certain formation. And then they'll have that letter, you know, Q for the or for Quaternary period or J for the Jurassic period. And they'll have these letters that will indicate. Usually there's like a, a big letter and then two little letters that will denote the name of that particular rock unit. Okay. Now there are three kinds of rock units, as I've talked about: sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Let's talk about sedimentary for a brief, brief minute. First of all, um, don't make any assumptions. I don't want you to assume. Uh, these are the ones that are hardest to kind of figure out because different kinds of sedimentary rocks are formed in different places, um, and they still might even be the same age. So these are the ones that everyone gets all confused about. And so, yeah, this isn't that critical, but but they usually are very wide. So over a large spent, they're very wide formations, but they tend to be very shallow. You don't tend to find them. I'm trying to do a cross section if I can do this. They tend to be very shallow, so that's that's one thing about sedimentary rock units. Now the igneous rock units, um, typically most igneous rock units um, had to get exposed because they were formed at deep under the world. So let's see the world here, uh, the sort of the crust, and it was formed down here. When I mean formed, that means it turned from a liquid into a solid. It, it froze, right? It was uh, it was magma, and it turned into um, a rock. And then over time, this upper layer got exposed in one of two ways. How did it get exposed? Either by erosion over many, many years, or you might get some kind of an uplift, which would cause this to rise, and it gets exposed, which is what happens, for example, to the Pikes Peak batholith, is that it was formed way deep underground, and it got uplifted, and now it's exposed for us to see. So that's an igneous rock unit. And the metamorphic rocks, they vary. These are the toughest ones to talk about. Well, I said that about sedimentary, but these are tough as well because they vary in composition. Because remember, a metamorphic rock comes from either an igneous or a sedimentary rock, and so then they're exposed. So their shapes can be just really complicated when you're trying to figure them out. So hopefully that gives you a, a brief idea of how to read a geologic map. Understand that there are rock units, three kind, main kinds of rock units. There's the metamorphic, there's the igneous, and there is the sedimentary. But then we break those down with those colors and all that stuff that we talked about with our maps and such, right? We've got colors, and this, you know, I, we can kind of see that the rock unit here for um, where we're at looks like it says YP. That's the... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the Y, Y stands for one of the ages of the Earth, and so that's the rock formation. But we can see another one here that's TMW, okay? And there here's TWR, all right? T stands for tertiary period. That's when it was formed or laid down in the tertiary period of the age of the Earth. Here's a jade over here. That stands for the Jurassic period, etc. So you can see that, and these are the different rock units that we can read on a geologic map, which we're going to spend quite a bit of time in class learning how to read the geologic maps. We're actually not just learning. Hopefully you learn how to do it. You're going to interpret them in class. So that concludes this podcast. We will see you in class. Goodbye, you are amazing students. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. goodbye. Yeah, 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 yeah.